I'm going to show you a sparkling game from day three of the Air Things Masters between Wesley So and Daniel Dubov. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting us via Patreon or PayPal. Links down there in the video description. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't voted for the game of the year, then do check out the poll, which is under the community tab on the channel main page. You'll find the link down there again in the video description. Right, lots to get through. OK, but let's crack on with the game. First two days of this uh, Air Things Masters, this online tournament organised by the Play Magnus Group, very cagey affairs, but day three certainly more exciting as, well, it became clearer who might be eliminated from this preliminary group. Um, so Wesley on very good form at the moment. He won, of course, the, the Skilling Open, the first of the Play Magnus online tournaments. And Daniel Dubov, well, he's the man of the moment. Didn't win the Russian Super Final, but did very well and, of course, played some wonderful games, as we know. Now, this particular variation of the Spanish, where the bishop comes out at a, an early stage is really really sharp and there is so much theory on this you have to know what you're doing with both colors and there have been many games played in this and it already features at this early stage a pawn sacrifice but black has a lot of pressure on white center you can see there's pressure here on this Diagonal. This is a quite an annoying pin for white. Not easy to get out of that. The bishop is very nicely placed on b6. But white is a pawn up and has managed to construct this center, but it is under a lot of pressure. Rookie one. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of games have been played in this line. Bishop takes knight. So that means if queen takes, then black can capture that pawn in the middle. So pawn takes. So white's king side has been damaged, uh, and there aren't many pieces around there. So knight h5 is a very natural move, looking at the f4 square and, of course, preparing to bring the queen potentially over to the king side. So, well, I think you can understand what I mean when I say you really have to know this position extremely well. White under a lot of pressure already, but also has strong trumps in the in the form of that centre. That light squared bishop also is unopposed. And you might recall a game from, well, almost a year ago, played in Vikanze, a superb game, played between Kovalyov and Caruana. And there f4 was played um, which is yeah a, a reasonable idea because it takes pressure away from white's center but well fabiano succeeded in getting anyway putting pressure on white center with c5 a wonderful game uh, do check it out it's on it's on the channel if you haven't seen it but instead of f4 wesley played king h1 and that is the most popular move so well a very understandable move putting the king in some security in the corner and possibly preparing to bring the rook to g1 so fighting back on the king side also takes the king away from this diagonal as well but wesley knows his theory it's very very interesting queen f6 and here, the most popular move is rook g1. But Wesley went with bishop e3. As I said, he does his homework very well. So he will have prepared this. Didn't spend too long over that move. Probably just recalling his analysis. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And now bishop a5. So things get very tactical very quickly. The bishop attacks the rook, and the rook also attacks the knight. Is this a problem? Well, 
there are potentially difficulties here. But Wesley was playing instantly. He knew what he was doing. And there's an old game of Ivanchuk and Shirov that the players follow for some moves. So Rook takes Knight. So Black is a piece up, but don't panic. Wesley bashed that one out. Bishop a4. And it's impossible for Black to hold on to the material. For example, if the Rook is supported like this, then White takes. And then Queen e2. And there's just too much going on here. Uh, it's impossible for Black to hold on to everything. And there's also a weak back rank. So, for example, a move like this, well, b4 is going to win material. You can check that if you like. So bishop a4 has just been played. And Dubov returns material with rook takes b2 and bishop takes knight. They're still following this old game between Ivanchuk and Shirov, which I'm sure that Wesley knew about. I'm not sure whether Dubov did. He was spending much more time than Wesley. So material is even now, and the rook threatens the bishop, which came back to b6. It's a nice thing about this variation from Black's viewpoint, is that this little constellation on the queen side gives Black some security. That bishop is anchored on b6, and there's permanently pressure on the d4 pawn, which uh, somewhat restricts <clears throat> this bishop on e3. Then again, white still has a strong centre. That bishop is unopposed. This rook is slightly out on a limb. So let's see how things went. Rook g4. So Wesley starts the fight back on the king's side. That covers the f4 square. And you never know, it could be useful on the king's side. Now that Ivanchuk Shirov game went rook b4 here. And uh, well, there were crazy complications that finally ended in the draw. Dubov played g6, <clears throat> which I quite like, I have to say. Blocks the g-file, potentially gives the knight a route back into the middle, putting more pressure on those dark squares, in particular the d4 pawn. That looks sensible to me. Now, I think, <clears throat> yeah, if... White is kind of static here. If White really doesn't take the game by the scruff of the neck, then you know a maneuver like this could certainly turn the game in Black's favour. So that's why Wesley hit out. You know he's he has such a good understanding. F four, and that F pawn can potentially be used as a battering ram. But White is taking on a lot of responsibility here. And if it goes wrong, then the king can be in trouble. Rook b4 puts pressure on the d4 pawn. Rook a4 covers. Rook takes rook. Queen takes rook. So a little bit of pressure is off. Um, but, yeah, is the queen in a, on a good square on a4? Is it too far away from the king? d4 is covered, though. That's important. Knight g7, the knight starts that manoeuvre, could be very well placed on e6. Bishop d5, well, potentially looking at the king, which stepped out of the way to h8. I think it's, it's such a tense position now. h3, so Wesley just gives his king a little bit of room on h2. That could be very important. So... Queen e7, and now Dubov, having played king h8, he's ready to advance that pawn to f5, which could actually be really good for black. It would certainly give the knight a, a wonderful square on f5 and break up those pawns and bring the rook into play. Uh, well, Wesley, of course, appreciates that. And he plays f5. I think it's a really brave move. I think... You know, he understood it had to be done. It, it does break up his pawns, but it kind of does it on white's terms. And also potentially gives this bishop a route through to the king's side as well. 
but involves sacrificing this pawn. And, well, yeah, it breaks up black's kingside, but also white's kingside pawn. So, you know, it's such a double-edged move, particularly in rapid play. 15 minutes on the clock they started with, plus 10 seconds for each move they make um, increment. But that's not a lot of time, and your judgment needs to be absolutely spot on. But this was very well judged. Knight takes pawn played by Dubov. And here's the key move. It looks as though black is doing very well, particularly as that queen is way across on the other side of the board. But this is a key move. Bishop g5. Now, if queen e1 check, king g2, and that is a deadly threat. That's where we can see the bishop coming into play beautifully. And f6 doesn't help at all. That is still fatal. So after bishop g5, black has to play f6. Now that is quite a concession. That bishop cuts right through to the king side. And, you know, these, these squares are all much weaker. You know, the rook is not going to be able to come to g8 now. And now rook e4. Instead of retreating the bishop, rook e4 just cuts the queen out of play. And here Dubov played what looks to be, well, a very natural move. Queen g7, kind of bolstering the king side. Um, in fact, it turns out to be a huge mistake. The best move is queen d8. Well, a very unlikely looking move, I have to say, in... You know, it just doesn't look right to, to put the queen to this slightly passive square. The bishop would have to retreat. Um, knight comes back. White has compensation for the pawn. That's all you can say. Black is a little bit passive. This bishop is a superb piece. But it's basically, you know, it's, it's playable for black. But instead, Dubov played the natural move, queen g7. And here, can you spot Wesley's move? I think this next one is really easy to overlook. White to play and win. What did Wesley do now? I'll have a little slurp of tea from my, my Brentford mug. And you have a little think. Here we go. White to play and win. Rook e8. Brilliant move. Wesley on top form to spot this tactic. So if here's the trick. If pawn takes bishop, then queen a8 is a winning move. There is absolutely no defense for black. It seems very unlikely, but we can see that bishop prevents the king stepping over. The rook cannot be defended. The, the bishop, sometimes a very strong piece, Looking at the pawn on d4, it's now just cut out of play. There is no defense. That's basically mate. And if queen takes bishop, well, that loses the queen. So after rook e8, well, this is already absolutely desperate. The, the threat anyway is queen a8. So Dubov played bishop a7. Tricky stuff. So has this saved black? Well, actually, no. But it's a great uh, attempt at a defense. If queen takes bishop, then rook takes rook, and black is winning. So how did Wesley win from here? Another absolutely beautiful move. Here we go. Are you ready? Queen d7. Absolutely brilliant. If queen takes queen... Rook takes rook, and rook g8 mate. If, let's say, knight takes d4, let's see how white wins after that. Well, we can take. And bishop h6, wonderful move. And there is a very picturesque mate. Queen g8. The king's escape routes are blocked by its own pieces. Wonderful move, queen d7. So h6 played, and now queen c8 anyway. 
hitting the rook. Rook takes, queen takes, king up to h7, and now getting a very nice winning move. Those two bishops are absolutely deadly. That was the final move of the game. If queen takes bishop, then queen g8 mid once again on that square. So let me just leave you with that final position, with the bishops coming good with the queens. Interesting, you know, we've seen games, I mentioned that game between Kovalyov and Caruana, where White's king eventually suffered. In this case, Wesley managed to break his way through. Uh, I really do like that move, pawn to f5, an, an absolutely crucial move and ex very well judged, followed by that move, bishop g5, which gave white, well, enough compensation. And those bishops sparkled at the end. Let's just leave that final position. There we go. So we're into the quarterfinals of the Air Things Masters. Wesley will be playing uh, MVL, I believe, and we also have Magnus playing Daniel Dubov. That's going to be an interesting one. In spite of losing that game, Dubov managed to qualify. The players eliminated at the end of the preliminary round robin tournament Hare Krishna, Grishuk, Giri, and Anton. There we go. It's tough at the top. See you soon.